stretch your mind? What do you do to take care of your mind? That can be anything from meditating, taking lots of breaks, lifelong learning, fun. And then the second question is, what do you want, what do you do that's important to you to take care of your body? And you can fill that up. What do you do to take care of your spirit? Who are the supportive people in my life? And go ahead and list those people that are supportive in your life. And what do you want to accomplish in your life? Or what do you want to accomplish over this time period? And the idea then is then you have this and it's like, okay, so what am I going to do to do this? I know that I like listening to music. Okay, am I going to, how am I going to do that? You know, does it mean that on my 30-minute drive or my hour-and-a-half drive on the on I-5 or 405 or whatever your commute is, do you have a certain music that you want to listen to? Okay. Um, I've heard of some people that they say the first thing they do when they get home is they want 30 minutes to just unwind by themselves. And whether it's meditating or just sitting quietly, and their family learns they do and don't interrupt them. Um, so these are all, this is, this is one thing. And one thing you can do with this too, you can do it individually, but you can also do this with a couple of colleagues or a couple of friends. And then you can hold each other accountable and check in periodically. So how are you doing with that? So those of you who are managers or leaders, and even if you're, if you're a charge nurse, um, you can help with some of this to help put it in. I mean, my charge nurses keep me very aware of what everybody's workload is and their duties. Um, but also making sure that people take their breaks. Okay. Now, there's a couple advantages. First, you're going to meet the letter of the law because I don't know about you, but um, in the state of Washington, we're seeing a lot of stuff with the nursing unions making sure people get their breaks and their lunch breaks. Which, but the other piece is, if you make sure people get their breaks, you're going to be preventing them from getting into the superhero syndrome. Because guess what? Patients are going to learn that there's a strong team supporting them, and it's not just one nurse. And the nurse is going to be each nurse is going to be taken care of, and you're going to have a much better functioning team and better patient care. Um, as a manager, avoid micromanaging. Oh man, have I learned that one the hard way more than once. Um, so it's really, you know, to make sure, you know, trust that your nurses know what they're doing and that they're managing things and that you're always available to answer questions. Um, I'm in a situation where I'm in a clinic that I'm the manager, I have a charge nurse, I may manage the cancer program, we have three visiting oncologists, and I'm there five days a week. So I get to wear a lot of different hats. So my staff keeps me in line, and I wouldn't be able to manage without them. If you need to, when you see people are really stressing, um, you, if your institution has EAP, the Employee Assistance Program, Go to your HR and ask them for some help in getting a counselor to come in and help with staff. For example, um, a number of years ago, we had a patient who we had taken care of and treated his colon cancer, and then five years later, it recurred. And when he was about halfway through, he got arrested for being a pedophile. And so he was in the county jail. He'd have to come in for his treatments. The nurse was nurse was really having a hard time because a number of them had kids that were in that age range. And, um, so we had, we had a counselor come in and help people reframe that so that it was okay. Because we did have a relationship with that man for many years. Um, and so EAP was really helpful to help with that. Um, when you talk about what are some of the quick tools that you can use, there was a study that was done, um, and this was in uh, one of the, young, with uh, one of the ONS publications. They were having a problem with on one of the units with a lot of staff turnover. And part of it is, you know, you go through, you don't always have that time to um, debrief when there's something that's been traumatic. And so what they started doing is within 24 hours of something happening, um, whether it was a code or whether it was somebody who died, anything like that, they would try to have a debrief session with those nurses that were um, immediately involved. And what they found was that session could take anywhere from nine minutes to 30 minutes um, and even if you just have a short 
time period to go over with the nurse what happened, how are you feeling, uh, what was your experience, and doing some of that debriefing. They saw after a year their um, turnover rate on their floor was already decreasing because they were able to provide that on the spot um, uh, support. Um, a lot of people, you know, they put support groups in and sometimes those work and sometimes they don't. Um, when we look at big, the big picture, what do we do organizationally? Um, this is kind of that whole process improvement. This is kind of, this is out of the um, Institute um, for Healthcare Improvement. And uh, they are just starting um, a new session, you know, on their webinars on putting joy back into work. And uh, this was really helpful. And to really go back and ask your staff, if you're seeing that your staff is having some problems, and I'm not saying that you have to do this as a manager, even you as a staff nurse, you can talk to your manager and say, hey, you know, the next staff meeting, this is what I'm seeing. Can we talk about some of this stuff? And asking what's, ask staff what's important to them. Find out what the barriers are. Make joy a shared responsibility. So it's not just, it's not dependent on the leadership, but it also is, it's dependent on all of us that are working together. And then of course there's that evaluation piece. All right, some ideas. Now I mentioned the debriefing after an emergency or paper, uh, patient death. Um, organizationally, how many people have ever heard of heart math? Okay, um, heart math, it's this little electronic thing and you have there usually two or three hour sessions, a couple of sessions. Uh, about five years ago, our hospital went ahead and put this in place and all of our employees um, from the hospital were able to participate and it was spread out over several months. It was this little battery operated thing that you'd carry, it's like a little speaker and then you'd have a pulse ox here. And the idea was that you would learn techniques to make the, as your stress level went up and the, the light would be red, you would learn relaxation techniques and everything to make that light go green. And it works. It really does. And a lot of it came out of cardiac rehab and how to get people's heart rates to calm down and for cardiac rehab. But we also found it was really helpful to um, use with staff members and help make their days go better. Um, we've also been looking at, we've, the suggestion and request was made that we try to do that for some of our oncology patients too, um, but at that point we didn't have any funding available, but we might have to take another look at that, um, since we had a recent golf tournament that raised some money for us. So. Um, and it's that whole idea of managing to take a deep breath, close your eyes, and calm yourself down, and then be able to pick up. The self-care plan, let it go. There's, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. There are just some things you have to let go. All right, so on our way here on Friday, we pulled up at Costco to fill up the gas tank, and I was supposed to load the, the car before I met my husband on the other side, on the mainland. And he opens up the trunk, and he goes, where's my golf shoes? Well, you said three bags. One, two, three, he says, three bags plus my suitcase. So guess what? I said, all right, Pro Golf Discount is right around the corner. We're going to stop there. <laughs> I'm buying you a new pair of shoes. <laughs> so it's, you know, there are just some things that's just not worth it and just let it go. Mindfulness in knitting. How many people knit in here? Okay. What's the result when you knit? Do you feel better? Do you calm down? I can't worry because I'm paying attention. So this was another study, and there's an article, I included it in the packet. Um, yeah, it's not for everybody. Um, <laughs> it's not for everybody. But um, there was a study done, and originally it, it's called the knittingproject.org, and it was a group of people that actually taught families and patients in pediatric hospital on, in Maryland um, how to knit. And so it would help decrease the stress of patients and their family members. Well, then what happened is it spread to the oncology nurses. And so the nurses started to learn how to knit. And so they ended up having like a basket of yarn and knitting needles in the staff lounge. And people, during their breaks, they take their 10 or 15 minute break and you basically go and you just knit. And it's that very mindfulness, relaxation kind of stuff. It's the same thing with the adult coloring books. How many people color? You know, 
it's it's some of those things to help bring that stress down, help you focus a little bit more on something else. Okay, the hidden wrap. That was my reminder. So this came from a volunteer, and she told me, she said, Renee, she said, you have to use this. This is a great idea. What they did, I didn't have a wrap. I had to grab something else. Basically, what they do, what they did is they would have this stuffed animal or this little stuffed rat, and they would put it in each other's desks or, you know, their lockers or hide it and, and you know, so it would surprise somebody. It's a way to bring in some laughter. And I did have some... Uh, some nurses that did that with uh, this, these Christmas sculptures that a patient brought in, and they would stuff them around and, and, and surprise people. And the hidden rat, I understand, also went on travels. So there were pictures taken on various travels and then sent back to colleagues. So that's another thing that can be just kind of fun to do. Um, and then bereavement cards. How many people fill out bereavement cards for their patients? And what they found is that if you take a few moments and you do a bereavement card or you just take a few minutes to write something special to that patient, it helps with you processing that grief in taking care of these patients as well as the patients really, the family members really appreciate. 